Hello and welcome to STEM with Mr N, where I perform different demonstrations and explain the science behind what we're seeing. Since it's World Space Week, I'm going to explore stargazing. Let's check it out. For some people, watching the stars at night is just a nice way to relax. For others, it's a fun hobby as they look for the different constellations. And for astronomers, watching the stars is part of their job as they study the origins of the universe and everything contained within it. People who live in the countryside will see more stars in the night sky than people who live in the city. But if they're all looking at the same sky, why do some of them see more stars than others? That is what I'm going to explore this week by making my own constellation. For this activity, I'm using a piece of cardboard, a sharp wooden skewer, a torch, a pen, and I've also got a darkened room that I'm able to control the amount of light that can get into it. The first thing I'm going to do is put the bit of the torch that the light comes out of down on the cardboard and draw around it using a pen. This is setting the area that I'm going to create my constellation in. Then using my sharp wooden skewer, I'm going to create my constellation within this circle by putting holes through the piece of cardboard. I'm going to make some holes bigger than others and I'm also just going to do a random pattern but you could do any pattern that you like. And that is me now created my pattern of stars. I'm now going to go to a different room for the testing. I'm going to put the torch on top of a unit in the room. Then I'm going to put my cardboard on top of the torch making sure that my holes for stars are lined up with the part of the torch that is going to light up. I'm going to turn the torch on and then I'm going to turn the light off in the room and look up at the ceiling at my stars. I'm going to be gradually introducing more light into the room. I'll be doing this by opening the door, then the curtains, then the blinds, and then turning the light on, all the while watching what effect these gradual changes are having on my stars. You'll notice that as more and more light was getting added to the room, the stars became harder and harder to see. The smaller stars were the worst ones to be affected, becoming hard to see quite early on and then disappearing entirely with all of the light in the room. The biggest stars could still be seen even with all of the light, but they were much fainter and harder to see than they were at the very beginning. So what was the purpose of this activity? Well, as humans, we have created a lot of artificial light, such as street lamps and car lights. Now, usually when somebody mentions pollution to you, you'll think of dirty gases in the air or rubbish strewn about the streets. However, light also causes pollution, and artificial light can block out dimmer, more natural light, such as light from the stars and light from the moon. An interesting point, the moon doesn't create its own light, the moon reflects light coming from the sun. This light pollution makes it very difficult to see stars at night in really built up areas where there are a lot more lights coming from street lamps, cars and people's houses than there are out in the countryside. This is also why telescopes tend to be placed in really remote locations to try and avoid as much of the artificial light as possible. And it is also why we've got telescopes in space, such as the Hubble Space Telescope and the James Webb Space Telescope. Because once they are outside of Earth's atmosphere, they are no longer affected by the light pollution. This means these telescopes get incredible views of the stars in the universe and really makes the life of astronomers much easier for studying the stars. Light pollution isn't just bad for people who want to watch the stars, it can also cause problems for animals. Some animals use light to navigate and others use it to know whether it's daytime or nighttime and whether they should be coming out or not. And the artificial light that we create can really confuse some animals. I'm sure you can appreciate this if you've ever had a neighbour's porch light or a street light shining in through your window onto your face, making it very difficult to sleep. Around the UK, there are areas designated as dark sky parks, and this is where artificial light is banned. So if you want to get incredible views of the night sky, either head out into the countryside or try and get to one of these dark sky parks. I'm going to do everything in reverse now, so I'm going to turn the lights off, 
close the blinds, close the curtains and shut the door and watch the effect it has on my stars in reverse as they now reappear onto the ceiling. Well, that's all for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons to stay up to date on all future content. As always, I would like to take this opportunity to answer any science questions you have about any science topics at all. So feel free to email me at stemwithmrn at outlook.com and I'll get back to you with answers to your questions. You can subscribe to the channel by pushing the button here and I've added links here to the other STEM demos I've done so far, here to my STEM career interviews, and here to my Things You Should Know series. This has been STEM with Mr N, exploring stargazing.